Text input in VR can be, to put it mildly, challenging. You know, like... So I need to type, type in my name here and it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's just it's just slow. Why don't I just say name, Joe? Name, uh-huh. <laughs> name, uh-huh. Name, Joe. Well, welcome to 21st century. Web speech API has been around for quite a while now. Speech synthesis and even speech recognition works. So what, what else can I do with it? Skybox. Uh, let's see. And I can choose what I like. Let's let's like this one. Skybox. Terrain. Dig. Dig. Aha, uh -huh. here it is. And I can dig, you know. I can also look. Aha. Uh -huh. Dig. Raise. Raise. And I can raise, but check this, height 1.5, height, uh -huh. and I can raise more or less, height 0 0.2, yeah, or less, right? Or I can change, and I can change texture. All that I need to do is say texture. Texture. Oh, well. Plenty of them around, right? Search desert. Submit. Let's, I don't know, take this one or, or that one, or I don't know, maybe, how about, how about this one? Look, whatever. And maybe I'll go back and, and change color to something more desert-ish like. Well. All right, what else we do here? We have here uh, world search, search test animated on, rigged on, rigged off, animated off, submit. Yeah. Here it goes. Move. Move. Yeah. Now, what is this UI anyway? This is called Hood. That stands for Heads Up Display. So it's a user interface that is mounted just in front of your head and moves around with you, right? But it can get in the way of, of your, your, your view or in the, in the way of pointer. So you can place it wherever you like, like this, or just grab it with your hand or with the other hand. And it sticks here. Once you grab it, 
your other hand becomes main one and you use it to manu manipulate objects like this all right So we have fully functional, fully functional user interface that is voice controlled. Most important thing is, I mean, the only one important thing that you must have here is one unique word that controls one element. So one word for the each UI element on screen. And that's pretty much all. Copy. Copy. Yeah, you see, looks simple, is it? And so on. Align. 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 Upright. Upright. Right. Okay. What what else do we have here? Look at this. This here is chat input element. So I can say anything. Say anything. Send. Right, and chat log pops up. Again, you can place it where you like it most. Let me just... And, a, and resize it the way you like it, like this. Okay. Move it here, there, back and forward. So you can read better. Say, come on. Say www.google.com uh -huh. send now you see if chat log contains any links I can click on the link and web browser pops right here in VR enabled website right and I can I can browse the web in VR enter test submit and looky Enter Facebook. Submit. And so on. I can probably go there. Yeah. yeah and so on but how does it work in the left corner this is your web browser there is a 3d object with the texture that represents web browser whatever you do with it you click on it vr space client sends a request to vr space server browser controller communicates with selenium this is web testing framework that starts and controls firefox browser firefox browses the web for you and when a web page is rendered selenium takes screenshot and vr space returns that screenshot 
to your web browser. VR Space Client then glues this screenshot as texture to 3D object represented uh, web browser in VR. But why Firefox, you might say? Well, it turns out that Chrome cannot render WebGL content in headless mode. But Firefox can. Look. And look, this is web vr site rendered in web vr cool huh <laughs> and that's all for today in the next episode mobile vr thanks for watching hope to see you soon